Hello, and welcome to Publisher Spotlight and our deep dive into nonfiction for the Montessori Conference. I'm delighted to start off with Factopia, which is a book that dedicated to the idea that one fact can always lead to another one. So in this case, the very first one opens up with a baby and it ends with the universe. How do you do that? You'll just have to dive in and find out. This is from Botanica Books, so you know it has all been impeccably researched. I'm excited to show you that one. And next up, this one's gorgeous. I promise you, there are things you will discover by reading this book. I had no idea about some of these things. Like, did you know that every bird or most birds are born with an egg tooth that enables them to get out of the egg and it disappears really soon after that? Just one of the cool facts in the beak book. So this is a wonderful exercise in how looking at one small part of something can explain so much more and lead you into finding out a lot more about the whole and about its relationship to other things. So this is the Beak Book, and I just need to show you a couple of these illustrations because they are just, just absolutely spectacular. So you know, who doesn't love a good, the beak is for straining, and then the kiwi bird, it's for sniffing. Who knew? Well, Robin Page knew. This is from Beach Lane Books, which is a division of Simon & Schuster. Next up, Animal Records. So, Animal World Record for Animals. So this is from Albatross, which is a new publisher to the United States. They are from the Czech Republic, although they've been licensing their books over in this country for a while. <clears throat> I do wanna say that everything, oh, sorry, I need some tea. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. That all the books that I'm showing you and all the publishers are easily easily available here in the United States. So I'm not going to show you anything you can't get because that would be cruel. So Albatross is really making a mark for themselves in terms of this really gorgeously illustrated nonfiction. Um, some of them are surveys. Some of them are have a more specific theme. In this case, it looks at different kinds of animals and the different kinds of records they may hold. So yeah, it's all the usual suspects. It's uh, you know the the strongest and the farthest and who can fly the who can fly the furthest and, and what is the smallest and then some other things as well which may be surprising so let's take a look at some of these shall we here we go the long jump so did you know if you had a long jump uh, contest that the white deer would be the winner but thanks to is his name Michael Powell I think it is anyway he actually jumped almost thirty feet which is incredible I can't even think about jumping that. So these are world record animals coming from Albatross. And if you're a fan of this kind of book where it's just all jam packed with all sorts of gorgeous, interesting information, then you'll want to check out the rest of their titles. Next up from Gecko Press in New Zealand, weren't we just talking about a kiwi bird? I think we were. We have fossils from lost worlds. This originally started in France, came by way of a publisher in New Zealand, and now is here available in the United States. It was just reviewed by Nicola Davies in the New York Times, and this is a wonderful book that really dives into the history of fossils. So how they came to be and how they are through time. So yeah, I know that Montessori schools really love timelines. So how's this? Thinking of strata as a timeline, the different things you would find in there. As you can see, it is gorgeously illustrated, and I love the different kinds of text types it uses in here. Some of it is graphic nonfiction, some of it is a more block text, but you just really get a sense of the drama that unfolds in the fossils from Lost Worlds. And it covers things all from the simplest kinds of cells up to the very last greatest dinosaur. So that is from Fossils of Lost, Lost Souls. Next up, from Tiger Tales 360 Degrees. Some more dinosaurs, ultimate earth dinosaurs, and oceans. So we've talked about dinosaurs. Let's look at oceans for a little bit. This is from Tiger Tales, and they're, they're nonfiction imprint for older readers. So this is more for an elementary age audience. And the thing that is cool about that is they use all the cool novelty aspects they use for the toddler set, but they adapt them for older readers. So what you might do is find all these flaps with this information, but also there are flaps within flaps. So you see here that seals can leap out of the water to escape danger. But guess what? There's another flap. So can great white sharks. So that gives you an idea of all the information that is to be found here. And you can watch all the different dramas unfold. 
filled, filled with so much information. So that is Ultimate Earth, Oceans and Seas, part of the 360 imprint. So again, if you're a fan of gorgeous nonfiction, that's another go-to publisher for sure. Now, speaking of great white sharks, that one did look kind of scary. But thanks to the shark lady, we now know a lot more about sharks than we used to. This is about Eugenie Clark and how she was fascinated with sharks from the time she was a small child and didn't want, she wasn't afraid of them. She was fascinated by them. And she devoted her life to learning more about them and became known as a shark lady. She earned several degrees and became a spokesperson about sharks and really helped the world understand these incredible creatures. And I know you guys like a good timeline. So I'm excited to show you the timeline of Eugenie Clark's, uh, her history, her life story. So there you go. This is Shark Lady, a picture book biography from Source Books. And if you like picture book biographies, please do visit our Pinterest board, or actually any books, and you'll find these and so much more there. And our Pinterest board can be found at Pub Spotlight. Now, speaking of incredible scientists and the things they discover, this is Mars Is, and the actual illustrations from this are taken by the rover. So the Mars rover is kind of the illustrator of this. Thank you so much, Mars rover, who has been in the news lately, or at least the newest incarnation has been. Suzanne Slade is the author of this book, and she actually is a rocket scientist. So this is from Peachtree. I have an arc here, but it's just so gorgeous and contains so much information about the red planet that we may not have really been exposed to before, but with the imagery and how striking it is, it really drives the points home. And I always think of it as just being a red planet, but it's not necessarily a red planet. And it's just not a round, smooth ball either. It has ridges, it has rivers, it has slopes, it has, ooh, landslides. Before I show you every single spread, you'll wanna check out this book. Mars is written by Suzanne Slade and published by Peachtree. This book, I don't have a great transition to it, except that it's cool. So this is music, a full dot history. It covers music, the history of music from ancient times up through the current day. And it is just the ultimate gut timeline. So you probably, if you've ever been to an AMS conference, you probably have seen What on Earth books and seen their gigantic timelines. And I just don't have long enough arms to show you all this, but you can see from that that there is a lot going on. And the other thing that I love about these books is it doesn't just do Western music. It has music from all the major Arab parts of the world. So, except for Antarctica. Hmm. Anyway, it shows music from all over. It has different instrumentation, all the different ways music can be made, all found in this amazing, amazing resource that actually, if you wanted to, you could even take it out of the book. Sorry, part of me just kind of cringed at that idea, but post it on a wall. Get two because it's double-sided. So that's music from What on Earth Books, the publisher about timelines. And lastly, from What on Earth Books, let's go to space, shall we? Space maps. So we think about maps as being something that is very much landbound. But in this case, we look at the, the sky and we learn more about how maps work, space maps work around the world. Did you know that the sky we see is different from the sky they see in China, and Greece, and South Africa? Well, that's all covered here. And why do things look different based on where you are? And, and how, why are we here where we are and how does that look to the rest? It's just so fascinating. What is beyond our solar system? And it's done in this gorgeous oversized format, which just has so much information. Each page could be a job in and of itself. Here, let's, let's look at Mars again, shall we? There we go. No, oh, that's not Mars, that's Jupiter. You can comment on that if you caught it. Anyway, this is space maps filled with so much information that a kid who is interested in the sky will just be enraptured for days. This is your tour of the universe. And I hope you've enjoyed this tour of a few of our wonderful nonfiction titles we have in our Montessori booth, a publisher spotlight. As I said, please do check out our Pinterest board for these and more. We hope you come by the booth and ask us questions. Please try to stump us. We would love that. Have a great day. Enjoy the conference.